moment, Lord, I see it through the eyes of faith, Lord. Knowing, Lord God, that you're going to do what you said you would do in your word. You said, if I would believe, I can expect to see, hallelujah, the answer fulfilled. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I believe in faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're going to see the hand of the Lord at work. For the eyes of the Lord go to and fro the earth to shew himself strong to them that fear him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's worship the Lord tonight.
deserve our everything, God. Hallelujah, Lord. We give you everything, Jesus, in praise and worship tonight, Lord. I want, hallelujah, to worship you with my whole heart. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Oh, God, we go after you tonight, Lord. God, we want your direction in this service.
one day every knee shall bow and every tongue confess, hallelujah, that he is Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, every man. Hallelujah, every woman. Hallelujah, every demon. Hallelujah. Everything is subject unto him. Every knee shall bow. Hallelujah. There's something about when you come in the presence of God. Hallelujah. There just is instantly something in you that feels a reverence. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for your presence, God. We don't take lightly, Lord God, for what is man that thou art mindful of him and the son of man that thou visitest him. We are privileged people. Hallelujah. The high priest in the Old Testament can enter in once. Hallelujah. Into the holy place. Hallelujah. But now the veil of the temple was went in twain from top to the bottom, top, top to bottom at Calvary. And now we can come boldly into the throne of grace and receive mercy and grace and help in the time of need. We are truly privileged people that can come before the throne of God in prayer. Hallelujah. He made a way. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It's truly no man like you.
Hallelujah. I feel a sweet presence of the Holy Ghost in this place tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we feel after you, God. We have our preconceived schedule, Lord God, but Lord God, we will yield to anything what you desire to do in this service tonight, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's take a moment and reach out to the Lord. I don't want to move any further. Hallelujah. At this point in time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's reach out to the Lord right now, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Lord God, we were asking for your will and your purpose to be done in this house tonight, Lord God. Lord God, I don't want to proceed without your direction, Lord. I want to be sensitive. We want to be sensitive to the Holy Ghost tonight, Lord God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God. We need you, Lord. We can't do anything without you, God. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise right now. I feel it's in order. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise him for his mighty acts. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's give him glory and honor to the King of kings tonight, who is worthy of all. Hallelujah. Glory and honor. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. This time, I'd like to call for the offering. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I believe I have a word from the Lord tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We'll talk about it in a second. Brother Ezra, you want to pray for the offering? Hallelujah. And while they're taking up the offering, I just want to uh, talk a minute about when the Lord gave me this message yesterday. Hallelujah. Uh, I woke up. First thing I thought of in the morning, Lord, what would you have me preach? Hallelujah. And two words came to my mind. Tarry until. Hallelujah. And the Lord began to deal with me on this subject, persistent faith. Tarrying until, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. So tonight, hallelujah, pastor, would you pray? Hallelujah. God, I'm going to listen to the man of God, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord God. I ask you, Lord God, to lead me and guide me, Lord. Guide my lips, Lord God. I ask you, Jesus, to help me to deliver what you've given to me, Lord God. But wait until the Holy Ghost comes. Hallelujah, Jesus, let your word go forth. Hallelujah, in Jesus' name. Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. If you would turn in with me in your Bibles, hallelujah, to Luke chapter 24, verses uh, 46 through 49. We'll read those real quick, and then we'll, you can be seated. So, hallelujah, Luke chapter 24, verse 46 through 47. And, 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 said, and said unto them, <laughs> Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise again from the dead the third day. And he, Jesus is speaking about, of, of himself. It's Jesus speaking. And the repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. And ye are witnesses of these things. Verse 49. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until... Hallelujah, you be, you be endued with power from on high. And that's the subject I want to talk to you about tonight. Tarrying until persistent faith. Hallelujah. Can we lift our hands to the Lord and thank him? Hallelujah. And clap our hands to him. Thank you for your word tonight, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord God. Oh, Lord God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus' name. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Terry, in this verse is the Greek word, the best I can pronounce it. Southeast Texas here, okay, that's where I'm from, y'all. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's the Greek word, kathizo. It means to set, appoint, to settle, to sojourn. 
Hallelujah. I felt like the Lord was challenging me in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Are you ready to tarry until something happens? Hallelujah. 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 Do you hear the voice of the Lord calling us, challenging us? Hallelujah. To tarry until. Hallelujah. And I rebid, as I begin to think about that, the Lord reminded me of some things I saw in my life and early on in about the mid-90s. The Lord, uh, there was a man that, I, that used to mentor me. He kind of helped establish me in the church. And his name was Michael Matthews. He was like a spiritual mentor. He's like a big brother to me, really. Hallelujah. He taught me a lot of things and helped me along in life at that stage of life and helped me to pray and get established. And hallelujah. We all need to find somebody like that in our lives that we, that we can mentor and that so if you're younger, they can mentor you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. A man, he took me under his wing, so to speak, and he helped me get established. And, but one night, I remember going to church, and we were sitting in the pew there. And I'd been to his house. I saw him suffering with his gout really bad. He had gout so bad, he couldn't even wear his normal shoes. He had to wear these sandals that had Velcro on the top. He could, he could barely latch it. I remember he, seeing him put that thing on, and he said, we're going to church, though. We're going to church. So we went on to church that night. Hallelujah. And his foot was so small, I felt so bad for the guy. Pain medicine didn't work, nothing worked. But that night, hallelujah, a visiting preacher came and, and he asked if someone needed prayer. My, my brother, I don't remember exactly what happened, if he, walked, if he raised his hand or he just walked up to the front. But I, I remember him walking up to the front. He hobbled, really, barely able to walk. He was doing this and over here, you know. <laughs> but they prayed. The preacher asked him, they prayed, okay? And the preacher asked him, how do you feel? He said, be honest. And Mike's reply was about the same. So the preacher said, let's pray again. So they did. And they prayed again and again and again. Hallelujah. But I remember counting because I thought it was so cool. They prayed seven times to my knowledge, to my, what I can remember, they prayed seven times. And at that seventh time, Hallelujah. Guess who was dancing and shouting across the front of the church with no gout, instantaneously healed. Hallelujah. By the power of God. I watched the man walk back to his pew. He, he couldn't hardly keep his flip, his, uh, well, flip flop, but sandal on. He had to take and latch it all the way back. It instantaneously went all the way down. Hallelujah. 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 It could have been any number of times. It could have been one. Hallelujah. But sometimes God, for whatever reason, wants us to press until. Hallelujah. You know he could have healed anyone at any time instantaneously. Why did the woman have to press till she got to the hymn of God? It's interesting to think about. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Mike, as he began to shake and dance. Oh, man, that was so powerful. I couldn't, that was so awesome. I, I was just so thankful. Hallelujah. And I've seen God work like that in many times and even in my own life. Hallelujah. So why did the woman... Why did he get his healing that day? So the question came to my mind. Why did the woman with the issue of blood get her healing that day? Why did they get the promise of the Father when Jesus, hallelujah, that Jesus spoke about and they received in Acts chapter 2? How did they, I believe there's one common thread through these examples. Persistent faith. Praying until. They tarried until. They pressed through until. She pressed through until she touched the hem of his garment. Hallelujah. They would not be denied. Hallelujah. 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 Somebody feel like that tonight? Hallelujah. I want to pray until. Hallelujah. I want to reach out until. I want to press until. Hallelujah. I get what I need. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody with me tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the Lord began to talk to me about this all yesterday afternoon. And, and he asked me a question. I was talking to Pastor about, I think it was last uh, Wednesday night maybe. But anyway, I don't remember exactly when. But, but the parable of the unjust judge. You know, why is this parable in there? What was Jesus really saying? And to me, this is revelatory. Hallelujah. About a prayer answering God. Acts, I'm sorry, not Acts. <laughs> Luke chapter 18 Verses 1 through 8, New Living Translation. Get that up there, please. Thank you. Hallelujah. It's the parable of the persistent widow. Verse 18, one day Jesus told his disciples a story. Now, listen to this. To show that they should always pray 
and never give up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That was revelatory to me. This is the reason he gave this parable, to show them that they should always pray and never give up. Persistent prayer. Hallelujah. There was a judge in a certain city, he said, who neither feared God nor cared about people. A widow of, a widow of that city came, came to him repeatedly saying, give me justice in this dispute with my enemy. The judge ignored her for a while, but finally he said to himself, I do not fear God or care about people. But this woman is driving me crazy. <laughs> I'm going to see that she gets justice because she is worrying me out of her constant re requests. Then the Lord said, learn a lesson from this unjust judge. Even he rendered a just decision in the end. So don't think God, so don't you think God will surely give justice to his people who cry out to him night and day? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will grant justice to them quickly. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But the Son of Man, when he returns, how many will he find on the earth who have faith? The woman in this parable wouldn't give up until she got what she needed. And I couldn't help but think about Mike that night. Hallelujah. I couldn't help think about when they, at the Acts chapter 2 when they prayed until. Hallelujah. I couldn't help but think about those that pressed. About blind Bartimaeus crying out. He, he, there was something about them that was persistent. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I believe that's a lesson for us. The reason for this parable, as we already talked about, was to show that they, we should always pray, to keep on praying and never give up. Hallelujah. The lesson we should learn is found in verses 6 and 7. God will answer those who continue in prayer. Verse 8, Jesus asks a question. When I come back, and I'm putting it in layman's terms, but when I come back, how many of you are going to have faith? Jesus is speaking to his disciples and therefore, you know, in a sense, speaking to us because he's speaking to the church. Hallelujah. His chosen people. <clears throat> are you going to have faith when I return? Hallelujah. Think about that. Hallelujah. Who amongst us will still truly believe in the miracles and the power that are in the scripture and that we've seen at times past in our lives? Hallelujah. Who is willing to be, have persistent faith enough to keep praying when the results aren't manifest yet? Hallelujah. Can I get an amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Aren't you going to do that? Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to keep praying. Hallelujah. We're going to keep pressing. Now, I, think God, I know God's answered prayer for a lot of us and all that, but I'm talking about I believe we should see more than what we've been seeing. Hallelujah. I believe when we pray for cancer, it could fall right off of them right there. Hallelujah. I believe, hallelujah, that we could see things that we haven't seen. And I believe that what the Lord is basically showing me, was showed me through this, is I want those times when you don't get that, you need to just keep praying and keep praying and keep praying and never give up until you get the answer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Daniel chapter 10. Daniel prayed and fasted 21 days before he received his answer. The moment he prayed and fasted, God sent the answer. Let's look at it. Daniel chapter 10, verses 12 and 13. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel. This is the angel speaking. For from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and chasten thyself before God, thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. But look, let's look what he says in the next verse. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one in 20, 20 days, 21 days. But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, and I remained there with the kings of Persia. <clears throat> in other words, I would have been here sooner, but the prince of Persia withstood me. So I thought about that before. I was like, what is a prince of Persia? It's not just a video game, I hope. <laughs> you know, it's a little humor, sorry. <laughs> Lord, help me. Everybody say, God help Brother Woody. He sure needs it. <clears throat> I'm a little goofy sometimes. I can't help it. <clears throat> <clears throat> the prayer was answered at the moment it was heard, according to verse 12. When Daniel prayed, God instantly heard it and sent the answer. Hallelujah. But there was a delay of receiving the answer, not because God didn't answer, 
but because there was a demonic opposition. The word prince that was used in these verses, like Prince of Persia and Michael, one of the chief princes, we know that Michael was an angel, so we, I believe that is speaking about angelic or sp demonic forces in, in, for the opposition and angelic forces, hallelujah, hallelujah for the good side. <clears throat> so we know that prince refers to angel, hallelujah. But there is an opposing demonic force that was fighting against Michael and the angel that was speaking. Hallelujah. There's an opposition that doesn't want you to receive what God has for you. Amen. Can I get an amen? Hallelujah. According to the scripture, they can delay prayer, but they cannot stop it. Hallelujah. They cannot stop persistent faith. Prayer that keeps going up. If you keep sending up your prayer, you fast, you pray, you do what you can, you just keep doing it. Because God has already sent the answer. You're just waiting for the arrival. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on. Amen. Don't you believe that? Hallelujah. They might be able to lay, but don't let that disturb you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because I believe even that God allows things for a reason that we don't even comprehend. But in here, I believe it's an insight into why God did that. Sometimes God will do things and, and, and we don't understand. You know, it's like whenever the soil, when a seed goes into the soil, we don't see how it germinates. All we see is when it comes up through the surface as the plant begins to break forth from the soil. So there's some things that God does that we don't understand. You know, God could do things just like that. But sometimes he chooses a process. <clears throat> you know, and um, so I lost my place here. Forgive me. <laughs> so they tarry until, they event, usually uh, people that tarry until usually get what they need. But why, but why does God allow, you know, Sometimes he doesn't just do things instantly. Why sometimes God allow a process, you know? <clears throat> he could just show up and do anything instantaneously if he wants to and has at times and sometimes still does. So why doesn't he do that as often sometimes as we would expect? And the Lord spoke to me one day when I was at a job. It was way back. I mean, we're talking I had hair, I think. <laughs> and he asked me a question. Then he immediately gave me an answer. And he said, why do weightlifters go to the gym? Then the answer in revelation of faith came. Because resistance makes you stronger. Hallelujah. Why does God not just hand out answers to many prayers instantaneously? I believe there are two reasons to this that I could think of. Resistance makes your faith stronger. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's strength, and it strengthens your relationship and reliance upon God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Believe me, he is right in all that he does, no matter what we think or how our human reasoning. Sometimes he is, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Amen. And lead not unto thine own understanding. Acknowledge him in all thy ways, and he shall direct thy paths. Hallelujah. God could have just instantaneously appeared and wiped out the prince of Persia for Daniel, but he didn't. He let things play out the way that he chose to. He catches the wise in their own craftiness. He uses man. He created man from the dust of the earth. Hallelujah. And that in itself is awesome to think that God would use us. Hallelujah. A man made a little lower than, than the angels, and he destroys the work of the enemy using them. God takes dirt, hallelujah, dust of the earth, and creates man and destroys the works of the enemy through it. Hallelujah. God chose to work with man. God chose to work through man. Hallelujah. He created himself a body and became a man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So he could bear the sin, our sins to Calvary and destroy the works of the enemy. Oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? Hallelujah. 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 Because of Calvary, because he came. Hallelujah. In the form of a servant and took upon the sins of man so he could save us. Hallelujah, hallelujah. He works through man. Hallelujah. And I, as I begin to think about that, an old song came to my mind. Hallelujah. And it just began to sink it in my heart at this point in this message. Satan, your kingdom's coming down. Hallelujah. Satan, your kingdom's coming down. Hallelujah. Faith, amen. I heard the 
voice of Jesus say, Satan, your kingdom's coming down. Hallelujah. How many, how many in here with me has got some persistent faith? We're going to keep praying. We're going to keep fasting. We're going to keep doing what we can do. Hallelujah. Until we see the answer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The devil doesn't want you to know how powerful your prayer is. Hallelujah. He doesn't want you to know that your prayers were heard the moment that you said them. Hallelujah, hallelujah. But God does. God wants you to know. The devil wants you to give up on praying because your answer hasn't arrived yet. Hallelujah. Amen. Hello. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. But God doesn't. Hallelujah. And I believe that's part of the reason why he sent me with this message. He gave me this message to remind us. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 7, verses 7 and 8 in the Amplified Bible. This brings out more of the tenses of the Greek. That Sometimes, most of the time, they did a pretty good, I feel like they did a pretty good, you know, translation with King James and other, you know, other versions, different things, you know. But, <clears throat> but this one brings out more, the Amplified Bible brings out more of the tenses in the Greek. And we lose something in translation to the King James in this particular verse. <clears throat> How many of you have heard, read this verse in the King James? You know what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 7, verses 7 and 8. It says, ask and keep on asking, and it will be given you. Seek and keep on seeking, and you will find. Knock and keep on knocking, and the door will be opened unto you. For everyone, amen, everybody say everyone. Everyone who keeps on asking receives. Amen, hallelujah, say it with me. Everyone who keeps on asking receives. Amen. And he who keeps on seeking finds and to him who keeps on knocking it will be opened but you have to keep persistent you have to keep knocking you have to keep asking you have to be like that woman that parable that Jesus gave hallelujah 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 he gave that for a reason the reason is he wants us to always keep praying he always wants us to always keep seeking don't give up because you haven't seen the answer Daniel hallelujah you already sent the answer it's on the way hallelujah hallelujah amen hallelujah let's clap our hands to the Lord thank you Jesus Hallelujah, hallelujah for some understanding, Lord, why we haven't sometimes seen things happen yet. Hallelujah. Now, in this, I want to talk about, we also know that there's times when God doesn't answer a prayer. Hallelujah. And sometimes that, that in itself is an answer. In other words, we all know that Paul had a thorn in the flesh. He besought the Lord thrice, three times, and he, he didn't ever get healed over it. But to my knowledge, the only time that God will not heal is for a purpose. And it, as it is in Paul's case, in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 7 through 9. And lest I should be exalted above measure, through the abundance of revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest that I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, I would rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest on me. Paul was receiving great revelation and the affliction was given to him to keep him humble. Hallelujah. Sometimes we don't understand God. And what he's done and why he heals some people and he doesn't heal others. He's healed me, and I'll talk about it here in a minute, some things he's healed me of. But there's something he didn't heal me of. Hallelujah. But I began to receive revelation and understanding and get a closeness with God. And I'm thankful for the affliction that I've had because it kept me from some things. Hallelujah. 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 So through all this, we know sometimes prayers are answered for the first time. You pray and God answers. I've seen it. Hallelujah. Sometimes through multiple persistent prayers. And here are some examples in my life I want to talk about. I was healed miraculously several times. I'm going to give you a couple examples here. As a little boy, I lost control of one of my feet. The doctors couldn't find out what was wrong. Brother W.E. Gamblin, my pastor at the time, from when I was born to when I was in my teens before he stopped pastoring, 
he called the hospital and spoke to my parents, and my parents told me, Brother Gamblin wants to talk to you. And so they, get, he, they gave me the phone. I don't remember who, which one it was, but I remember my parents being there talking to me, and I remember talking to Brother Gamblin. And he told me that he and the church were going to be praying for me. The next thing I remember was I woke up one morning and I had feeling in my foot and I had control of it again. My foot was flopping. The doctors couldn't explain why they thought I might have polio or something. They didn't know what was wrong. The doctors never did find out. I remember uh, they were sticking needles in my feet. I couldn't feel the needles. But I thought I remembered it distinctly because I thought it was so cool because I felt like I had superpowers as a kid. You know how kids are. You know, over there, I was moving my foot and this, you could hear this, you know, the nerves. You know, I, anyway, that's kind of off track there, Woody. But, uh, but uh, <clears throat> I know that God, you know, the doctors couldn't figure it out. But God had healed me because of the prayer of the saints. Hallelujah. And to this day, look. I don't remember what foot it was, but I got control of my feet. <laughs> you stick a needle in it, I promise you I'm going to feel it. <laughs> Hallelujah, praise God. Hallelujah. But also I remember another time in my mid-20s, I was trying to work construction dragging concrete. You know how hard to work that is. <laughs> Hallelujah. We had these big long forms. I remember I was at Rest Car, a company called Rest Car in Orange, pouring big long forms and, you know, we had to build the farms. We had to tile all the wire. We had to do all that really hard physical work. And I held this, basically this jackhammer thing, and, and it would bounce up and down. It had like a, a circular plate on the bottom. It would bounce up and down on the ground. You'd have to hold it like that all day long. But I, I, my back started hurting me, and it got so bad. So I went to the doctor. I couldn't work but a half a week, and I eventually had to give up that job because I just could not do the work. I'd lay in the bed. Hallelujah, my back would be hurting so bad it'd feel like I, I was literally bedridden for half a week. And I tried to go to work the next week, and I just could not do the work. And it felt like somebody just took hooks and put it in my back and just began to rip my back open. with. That's what it felt. That's the only way I know how to describe it. It was so bad. They called it spondylosis of the spine, degenerative arthritis. I'd work two or three days and be bedridden for the rest of the week, you know. Every time I would sneeze or cough, I'd be like excruciating pain in my back. And I just couldn't hardly really take it. Hallelujah. And every time that happened, I began to think about Jesus and the cat of nine tails that, that tore his back open. And I remembered that he died for me. He, he took that pain for my healing, for with his stripes we were healed. Hallelujah, hallelujah. But one day, there was a prayer meeting at my house. It was one of these simple one-time prayers. I didn't feel anything. But I remember the four, four words. Brother Carl Webby's passed on now recently. He come up to me in the middle of one of the prayer room one night and said, Lord, heal his back. Didn't feel anything, but I just believed it. I said, Lord, I'm just, I don't feel bad now, you know, so I'm just going to start working. I worked out for five years and got carpal tunnel. <laughs> I didn't get healed of that. But that's what I'm talking about in a second. It led me into the other thing that I was thankful for because I didn't go playing all this crazy music and stuff that I wanted to play at one time, you know. And it got me away from that stuff. That was a blessing in disguise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But guess what? Guess who is still has no back pain? Hallelujah. Since my mid-20s, and I'll be 53 this year. I'm not supposed to be able to do the physical work I'm doing. I'm not supposed to be able to juggle and do all these these physical things, but I'm doing them. Hallelujah, hallelujah, because of Jesus, because of one prayer, hallelujah, that was prayed one time without any sensation or feeling, God healed me. Those are two very noticeable things that I know what happened in my life. Hallelujah, I have zero problems with arthritic pain in my back at all. I mean zero. Hallelujah. Praise God. I don't even hardly remember what it feels like in, in the scene you know, now. But um, so what I've learned in my life so far, sometimes he will do it in a moment. And sometimes he wants us to press. Sometimes he wants us to seek. Hallelujah. If you pray and it doesn't happen, pray again. I like this acronym. It helps, helps me to remember. It's called PUSH. P-U-S-H. Pray until something happens. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Somebody, 
feel the challenge of the Holy Ghost tonight. Hallelujah. He wants to remind you, hallelujah, that though you've prayed, hallelujah, and you haven't seen the answer, just keep praying. Hallelujah, because God is a prayer answering God, and though you may not see it yet, he has already heard your prayer. Hallelujah. Remember Daniel. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we just relift our hands to the Lord tonight? Hallelujah. Thank you for reminding us. Hallelujah. About what he is doing and how in details about why we haven't seen some prayers answered yet. Hallelujah. Daniel, I've already sent your prayer. I've already heard you the moment you set your heart to pray and to fast. Hallelujah. But Daniel didn't stop praying during that time. He didn't stop fasting during that time. He kept doing what he knew to do until he got the answer. Hallelujah. 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 This time, I really don't know how to proceed from here. <laughs> Hallelujah. But let's just, let's just come and gather around the front. Hallelujah. Whoever uh, is able to and is willing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus, Lord, I'm asking for your direction right now, God. I just don't know what to do right now. But, Lord, in light of this message and what you spoke to us about, is there something you've been praying for? I want you to come stand up here right now. How you been praying? You're still praying? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I remember Abraham when he prayed. Um, when, when he, God gave him a promise, promise of Isaac. Hallelujah. Mm. God gave him a promise of Isaac but it looked like it was going to be gone hallelujah but the Lord made a way when there was no way hallelujah Jesus Lord oh Lord God the promise you've given us God you are a God that keeps your promises Lord God and even though it looked like Isaac hallelujah the very bloodline that you promised it, hallelujah for us to have generations of flow through Lord you asked for it back Hallelujah, but Lord, you eventually made a way when it didn't seem like there was going to be a way. Make a way, Lord God, in the name of Jesus right now, Lord God. You will make a way, God. You will do what you promised you will do, though we do not see. Yes, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. We know that God is going to answer. Don't give up on your promise. Keep pressing. Sister Lauren, don't give up. Hallelujah. Brother Kyle, don't give up. Hallelujah. He's a God that keeps his word. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yes, Lord God. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Oh, mighty God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. That word came to me this morning when I was thinking about you guys. I was reminded about Abraham and Isaac. Hallelujah. And God gives his promise. It didn't even look like it was going to be able to happen. They were old, you know. Now you are, but, you know. But, uh, <clears throat> but, they, <laughs> but they, you know, it seemed impossible, but God made a way. Then the, then the sun came. Then all of a sudden, hallelujah, God says, take him. And offer him to me. And when God, when they were willing to lay it down, when Abraham was willing to lay it down, God saved Isaac. Hallelujah. And made a way. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. All I know is what I feel in the Holy Ghost. I'm not God. I don't know what's going to happen. I just know what I am pressed to say and what I am pressed and what the Lord lays on my heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Does anyone else need prayer for anything? Something you've been praying for? Maybe you've been praying for something for a long time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to keep praying. We'll bind together. We'll keep praying. We'll come down every service if we got to, but we're going to pray until something happens. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Just before we close, if there's... You may not come to the front and get prayed for, but if there's something in your spirit, if there's something you've been asking for, if there's something that maybe you're just a little bit too shy to come and pray for, why don't we just take one moment and let's remind God of what your request is. You know, God, is, God isn't speaking to us, and I believe God wants to answer some prayers. God wants some testimonies of what 
of his goodness and greatness. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Praise God. Yep. Yep. Glory to God. Praise God. That's right. That's right. So I just want to take a few seconds and I want you to open your mind and maybe something that you've been praying for. So we just take just a second. Let God put something into your spirit, something that is laid on your heart. Just bring it back to your memory. But we're just going to pray in one moment and I want you to let God know. I want you to remind him. Let's just begin to reach out to the Lord. Lord, we love you and we praise you, Jesus. God, we are stirred by your word, that you're faithful, God, to what you've spoken, and that you're a God who hears, and you've heard from the beginning, Lord. But as your word says, sometimes you are, are wanting us just to be persistent and consistent with our request to you, God, and that the answer is on the way, God, and that you are going to answer, that you're going, God, to deliver, that you're going to heal, that you're going to save, God, that you're going to bring about an expected end, precious Lord. And so today, we remind you, God, once again of that need, God, that, that burden, that Whatever you have laid in our hearts and our minds, oh precious God, we give it to you, God. We we let you know once again, God, we, we're like that woman who came before the unjust judge, God. We, we're reminding you, God, just one more time, precious God. We're asking, God, we're asking again, God, so that we can, God, receive. We're, we're seeking, we're knocking, God, we're being persistent. God, we want you to know that we're serious, God, and we believe you and that we have faith in you, and that we know that you're going to answer in accordance to your will, your plan, and your purpose. And we thank you, Lord. We love you. We praise you. Thank you, Jesus. Why don't you just go ahead and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for rain, God. Thank you for cooler temperatures. Thank you, God. We worship you. We praise you, God. There's no one like you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Praise God. I'm believing for great testimonies of the goodness of God what he's going to do, because he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Praise God. He doesn't change. He doesn't change. Let's just pray as we close. God, we thank you so much. We worship you. We praise you, God. Help us, Lord, as we go into this coming week. God, we pray for your strength. We pray for your direction. We pray for your wisdom. God, help us, God, to go into the harvest, God, to be sent, God, to be witnesses, to be a part of what you're doing, God, to see signs, miracles, and wonders, God, to, to see great things on behalf of you, God. We're not in it for ourselves, God, but just to see your name glorified, to see, God, your kingdom come, your will be done on this earth, God, and in this town, and in this city, Lord, in our families, and our homes. God, be, over, be with us, God, watch over us, keep us, and protect us, and keep Lord, and we love you, God, help us, God, give us strength, for the journey's too great for us. Lord, and we love you, and we praise you, and we pray for these things in your precious name. Oh, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. God bless each and every one of you. Uh, we do have a special prayer meeting this Tuesday at 645 at, the, at Jonestown at Brother Lyman's house. It's also their church, but there's going to be a special prayer service. Anyone that's interested will be taking a van to go to that special meeting. We'll probably leave around 6 o'clock if anybody's interested in going. Other than that, we're dismissed in Jesus' name. Praise God.